What's up everybody, this is Super Bowl champion Sam Madison, New York Giants, and you're watching BTP Sports. Hey folks, and welcome back. So, we've got the SEC, AAC, SWAC, Conference USA, and Big Ten down. So now let's go to the other big conference, and that's the Big 12. Another one that we have some vested interest here, you know, uh, being in, in the state of Texas with uh, Baylor, which is a whole nother situation. Um, Iowa State, Kansas, Kansas State, OU, of course, Oklahoma State, TCU up in uh, Fort Worth, UT, Longhorns, of course, Texas Tech, and West Virginia. Quite a few Texas teams in there. So, Jalavet, I'm going to start off this one with you. Talk to me about the Big 12 Conference. Baylor lost a coach. They have a whole bunch of other legal issues. So, that could be very detrimental to a team right off the back. So scratch them. <laughs> <laughs> and it's sad because they were a good team. Yeah, they the were a good team. Years. You they know, really good, good offense. Good offensively. Let's put it the offense. True. Offense. Touche. Defense. Yeah. But so scratch Baylor, Iowa State, Kansas, Kansas State. Come on. Do we really have to go come there? Come on, son. Yeah, mm. come on. Uh, Texas Tech. Huh, West Virginia. So really and truly, it only boils down to really and truly, in my eyes, two teams. Oh, let me oh, I forgot Oklahoma State. But no, not really. Uh, TCU and Oklahoma. Now those TCU. Those, TC, TCU and Oklahoma. I, I mean, so? last year, you know, even though Boygans, they had the whole, he mm -hmm. had the deal out there in San Antonio around the Alamo Bowl before they played Oregon. But, you know, TCU, very solid offensive line, uh, good receivers, some very good defensive backs, which that's the way the Big 12, if you're going to run the Big 12, you better have some good defensive backs because right. it is a pass happy offense. Especially when you're playing like it, Texas Tech. Right. Mm -hmm. How they throw now, the ball 60, 70 times a game. And, and the only sense. question about Texas is, how long is it going to take for before they get tired of Charlie Strong? That's and, that's my whole deal right there because Charlie Charlie Strong he's such a disciplinary doesn't fit into that Texas whole uh, University of Texas kind of look if you ask me. He's not you traditional. Know? No, he's not. He's not the he's traditional. Not traditional. Because one of the first moves that he made was, hey, look, if you're not a senior, you're moving back on campus and you're staying in the dorms. And players are like, what? Yeah. No, I, nah. That kind of doesn't go over too well, especially with Red McCombs and the boosters and stuff like that. They kind of like they uh, lost a lot. They lost a lot of uh, support recruits behind that and, and support boosters. Yeah, boosters stopped are behind contributions mm -hmm. while, when they hired strong. And you know the reasons why. Let's be honest, a lot of it was racial. I can't remember a lot of those people didn't want to see him coaching. The I team. can't remember what game that was that was that we were at last year. But when Texas lost very, very, very bad, I think I saw you in the media room at NRG. And, no, I saw your wife at, in the media room, and I said he's gone. He's gone. They're going to get rid of him. But that they didn't. Was, uh, that was West him. Virginia. Was it West Virginia? I'm not too sure who yeah. it was, but they lost bad. Yeah. And it was on TV. And I was like, he's gone. Now, uh, before we came on, you were actually uh, <coughs> segue into that. You were talking about Charlie Strong and his tenure at UT. Uh, talk to me about that. Well, see, I went to UT. I graduated in '78. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess you can say before my daughter went to U of H, I bled orange and white. That's right. But I agree. I think this is Charlie Strong's year. If he doesn't, if he doesn't finish. <laughs> with eight wins. <laughs> that was kind of nice. It's all good. <laughs> he doesn't finish with eight wins this season. He's gone. Eight? Yes. I think so. Yes. I, well, no, I think, that's, uh, I think that's on the low end. I think he needs to do better than that. Okay, we'll go nine. Yeah. <laughs> if he really I wants to get a job and win 10 games, you don't have to worry about it. But <clears throat> the difference with him is, is I think you were right. He came into a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. Texas is a traditional school. Mm -hmm. Um. I questioned the hire when they did it. Mm -hmm. You know, he came and started cleaning the house, saying, you're going to do this, going to do that, da, da. I'm a traditionalist. Mm -hmm. But like you said, he was fighting alumni. Mm -hmm. He was fighting boosters. Yep. He was fighting some of stuff inside his own team. Mm -hmm. But I don't think he's a bad coach. I just don't know if he's a good fit. Good fit. That's and I still perfect. say eight or nine perfect. wins <coughs> and a major bowl invitation, he may be gone. Wow. Mm -hmm. okay, and, I'm, and that leads into, you know, same thing with, Going back to the SEC with, with Texas A&M, I think the same Sumlin. way yeah. with Sumlin. <clears throat> and he had the same problem at A&M. Right. You know, he had the same problem. I mean, coming into a, a situation where they're like, you know, they, they weren't – of course, they don't have the rich tradition that UT has mm -hmm. as far as football, but it's kind of the same thing, you know. So um, – I don't pick them more further than fifth or sixth in the conference. Really? So – who do I pick to win it? Oh, you. Oh, you. Of course. Right. Of course. Of course. Now, uh, Jerry, you, yeah. you had something over there. Media day was interesting this year. That's right. You were there. Yeah. Uh, for both days, Monday, Monday and Tuesday. 
Um, it was interesting uh, uh, for the fact that one, they were talking about, you know, the big question mark about expansion. Uh, the, the network product, uh, partners and all were pushed back, were pushing, starting to push back about uh, what are you going to do as far as putting the championship game, why are you still co coming to the money well? Mm -hmm. uh, this is pretty, I think this is your third time that you've been here with the one commissioner that you have now, right. right now, and you still hadn't done any expansion and you hadn't talked about it. And all everybody's concerned with in that conference at that point, before the season starts, was about how much am I getting? Right. How much am I getting? Right. You know, and how much am I going to lose? It sounded like the big whack back in the day when there were 16 teams and four divisions, and it took you four years to play everybody in the in the in the conference at least once. That don't make no sense. And you had, you went from Central uh, time all the way to Pacific time because you were transferring out from one, two, three, four time zones mm -hmm. between Hawaii and Texas. And it just wasn't a good fit. And then, and to make a long story short, we go to Vegas for the basketball tournament. The group that were on the other side of there, Rockets as they call themselves, mm -hmm. had made a had had a meeting with ESPN and left early when the commissioner went off for the uh, the uh, uh, NC2A meeting, mm -hmm. the committee meeting for the, to put the bracket together for the men's final four. Had a meeting in Denver in one of those VIP rooms in the airport. ADs, presidents, presentation was made. Bam, the next day, we're gone. Now you got the same situation on a, less, uh, on a larger scale as far as teams saying, we don't want anybody else in because they're cutting into my pocket. That's right. And, and, that, and, and that's, a, that's a very good point, how the game has gone from the game to a business. Now, the NFL, professional sports, has always been a business like that. But now with college football, which we'll say that conversation for another day. Man, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> get this cat started on that. But um, it, it, it's all business now. Yeah. So I understand 100% what you're saying. Now, uh, Brother Jones. And, and speaking of UT, they come right out the gates Notre with Dame. Notre Dame. Know right. their lame is what I like to call it. I, More shade. So, yeah, absolutely. So talk to me about that, that opening game with, I, with the Irish. I think that's the game that kind of sets the tone for what's going to happen with Charlie Strong. I think if he wins that game, has these guys ready to play, they look impressive. Uh, you know, I, I, I think there's nine wins out there for him. They look unimpressive in that game. I think it's just a matter of time. What do they say? Dead man walking. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I think he's got he's to push all his chips to the table for that game. I mean, he's got to have his quarterback situation locked down. True. He's got to have his defense locked down. They've got to have a solid game plan. Mm -hmm. They cannot look like they don't know what they're doing because he's come in so heavy-handed, because right. he's been such a disciplinarian. All that's got to translate into, you know, like you wins. guys said, wins. <laughs> This year. That being said, I you know, I see the Oklahomas being the cream of the crop in the Big 12 this year. Uh, Texas, uh, uh, TCU, you've always got to count them in. Um, I'm for one, am, am, am not looking for Baylor to do well this year, and I don't think they should do well. Too much going on. I yeah. think they are focusing on the wrong thing. I think they need to be focusing on these uh, student athletes and young ladies. I mean, these young ladies that are are being abused on campus. I don't think it should be about the program. I hear you. The fact that Art Browse is running around on his tour, on his, you know, I'm a great guy program. I think he should be somewhere thinking about, you know, what happened under his watch. Yeah. So uh, again, I'll go with the Oklahomas. I'll go with TCU. And boy, I tell you what, Texas UT's got to got to look good Long road in home. game one. Game yeah. one, they've got to look good. Yeah, and you know, to, to piggyback on on your point about Baylor, and you know, we we actually covered Baylor some last year, but you know, I, we've said boldly, and I'll say it again, we'll, we'll never cover them again. I, we we can't be, get behind a program that allows things like that to go on, and you know, we don't care what anybody thinks about that. Well, we can't get behind a program that allows things like that to go on in there within their program. Football aside, like you said, it's not about football yep, at this no. point. You but could, uh, to segue into the Baylor situation, mm -hmm. we understand that uh, Coach Grove is there to facilitate, is, is, is there to facilitate mm -hmm. uh, and move the program along, get them in a position, and kind of like right the ship. That's it. For me, the game for them for for Baylor this season, well, when they uh, when they come to town to play Rice. 
it'll be uh, a lot will be said about first their traveling fans, two how they look as a team just coming getting on and off the bus, mm -hmm. and that game, and if that game falters on them, you'll know where that program is mentally yeah. after that game because Rice is, a, is one of the old Southwest Conference rivalries yep. that they've had time in and time out. It'll be a judgment game for both programs right. moving forward. And actually, uh, Rice was one of the games that we covered for Baylor last year. As a matter of fact, you saw on uh, one of our intros that sick juke move that the kid from Rice gave Baylor, and it was, it was just insane. And Rice actually gave them a little bit of hell for a half. Mm -hmm. And then they just opened up the floodgates in, in the second half. So I think we all pretty much agree that OU is, is the class of the Big 12, and there's not a whole lot to talk about there. So we'll move on to the Pac-12 now, out, out west. So the North Division, you got uh, Stanford, Oregon, uh, Washington State, Cal, Washington, and Oregon State. Okay, Jolivet, talk to me about the uh, Pac-12 and uh, specifically the North Division. Oregon. <laughs> they're always going to have that whole deal where they go through a lot of speed. The thing that about that part of the football in that part of the country is that they like to run a lot of trickery offense. Mm -hmm. And you, it, it just always gives to which, whichever defense doesn't tackle the most that day. Defense? They play defense in no, the they play defense. <laughs> Oh, but okay. whichever, whichever defense misses the most tackles, that's the, exactly. <laughs> that's the team that loses. But, I mean, as far as Cal, you know, with Cal, with the loss of uh, they played last night. As a matter of fact, they played last. They played. They uh, played out um, Hawaii last night. Yeah, they did play Hawaii yeah. last night. It was probably one of them late, late games because Hawaii. No, it was actually. No, it was early. Yeah, it was actually it was early. early. I take oh, it. It was early. Look yeah. at me paying attention to my Steelers. Isn't that some mm -hmm. Kelly? Paying attention to our Steelers just there. I missed the dog on college football. And they, and they look. They got a running back. That Muhammad kid. Did you yeah. watch that yeah. game? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Cal got a little something. Webb, I know it was Hawaii. Did, mm -hmm. As a quarterback, Webb didn't look bad. No, he didn't for a freshman. Yeah. Yeah. At all. Yeah, you but know, as far but as Cal, some big shoes to fill. Though. Yeah, but as far as Cal goes, uh, losing golf into the draft. Mm -hmm. uh, but Oregon always seems to be consistent because no matter who they plug into the office, as long as that they're athletic, they pretty much kind of can do what they want to do. Yep. And it always boils down to who is Oregon going to lose to, who who is going to figure them out. So between in that division, the North, Cal, or Oregon, pick yep. pick your two. And it's just whichever one of those two beat each other. No love for Stanford. Stanford. Christian McCaffrey. That's going to be the guy that I think will win the Heisman this year because really? of the way that they really use him in many advances Whoa. of the game. I'm just – hey, what? look, Leonard, Leonard, Leonard Fournette runs the ball. He plays one position. I don't even think him. Who? Yeah. I think Deshaun Watson. Uh, I, I, do. So. I, I do. I mean, I do. That, I mean that's perfect. That's the best dude-threat quarterback but the whole, I've but the seen whole in deal, college in a minute. Christian McCaffrey, the way that they utilize him, kickoff return, He does everything. Return. He's on the field more. He's on the field a I, lot I, more I, and, I, and I, racking up more yards. I can affect the game more than just – on offense because, hey, look, if I'm putting the ball off, hey, look, that's an automatic turn of events. He's always got a chance He's to touch the ball. He's always got a chance to touch the ball no matter what's going on. Whereas Deshaun Watson, he touches the ball every play, but he can't touch it on special teams. He can't touch it in kickoff return. He can't tackle anybody. So, but you know what? But at the end of the day, they're going to give it to who they want anyway. Right. Because look at De – no no shade on Derrick Henry. You know, uh, Rich covered the Heisman last year and met Derrick. He's supposedly a good kid. You know, I've heard nothing but good things about him. But you look at Christian McCaffrey's stats from last year, like uh, – Fletcher just had to mention he broke my boy Barry Sanders' record. Oh, I, that came from Rich, of course. <laughs> uh, he broke Barry Sanders' all-time record, which has stood for almost 30 years. You know, that's amazing that that has lasted that long yeah. when, I, when, when that was mentioned. Mm -hmm. And you go back and you look and you're like, that's a lot of folks that are in between yeah, and yeah. You know, they, they'll put yeah. some numbers up. Uh, yeah. And, all, and that, uh, that, that record still sits still in there. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Now, um, we already talked about uh, Bama and USC. Now, UCLA is actually coming here yes. this weekend to start off against uh, Texas A&M. Brother Kelly, talk to me about that one. What? Uh, UCLA and uh, A&M. What, what are you expecting to see from that game? I'd like to see A&M win it, but I don't know if they can. With yeah. the many problems going on, I mean, how many, how many quarterbacks has he lost since Two. last year? Two? Yeah. Yeah, he lost um, the starter. His name escapes me. Then Kyler Murray with the right. kid, the kid out of Allen. He right. left. He, matter of fact, he went to OU. He right. went to Oklahoma, didn't he? Yeah. Who's he Tyler dating Murray? now? Who, yeah. Who's he dating? And who's he dating? Yeah, did he date like one of the Robertsons, the kids? Oh, I didn't know that. Hold on, Robertsons. From, yeah, uh, from, you know, Duck Dynasty guys. Oh, Ooh. did not know that. I think it is. Wow. That might have a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no. But, I uh, think, I mean, 
I think UCLA is probably going to win it just because the problems A&M is having. Yeah. Like we've said earlier, you know, I've said that if someone doesn't do something this year, he's gone. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I agree with that. Now, um, real quickly, give me your take on the Pac-12. Pac-12, I'm going to go with Shaw, Stanford. He's one of those coaches that next man up. Yeah. Um, and, and and he does have uh, McCaffrey. And he, uh, you know, again, I think he plays solid offense, solid defense. They don't make a lot of mistakes, but when they make them, they make them at They're the wrong them. time. Yeah, exactly. You know, they'll yep. make them yep. against Arizona State and lose. Yep. Or they'll make them against, you know, a team that, you know, they're just coming off of a big win, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, now they're about to roll. They have ro rose back up in the, the polls. and Then they go to the Rose Bowl and play a flawless game. <laughs> you know, exactly. <laughs> you know, yep. so if, if they can minimize those mistakes that invariably happen every year, I see Stanford taking the north. Um, believe it or not, I, I, I'm still sticking with, with USC and, and a team that we haven't mentioned in, in, in the south is Utah. Utah. Yeah, that's where you I was going to go. The, yep. The Utes just, again, they find a way to get a decent quarterback. They find a way to play good offense. And they find a way to play some reasonable, functional defense. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> Functional. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> lack of a better word. And, 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 and that's getting that done without access to recruits. Right. In a, in a, in a, in a they really situation. go outside of Utah and California. Most of their team comes from California. So they don't, they don't get, they don't go all over to recruit. So that's, that's actually a real good point. You know, it's. And it's interesting, BYU is the same, same situation. Thing, same thing. You know, you, you, the state is not built for high school, you know, for, for looking for, for high school athletes, no. even on it's, it, in, a, in their other sports and all. Sure. But for whatever reason, some they way, somehow, yeah. they, they figured it out and kind of like make it work. Same right. way with Boise State. When, right, that's with, true. With, it, with, that, with their situation, because I've been to Boise. That's a hard place to get to. <laughs> I mean, literally, you, you, you're doing some pillow jumping, you know, you, you're getting to two major airports and then you're getting into a, another situation. I'll tell you about Utah, man. What Utah does, and they do it brilliantly, they tap into those little, like, islands with, like, the Samoan guys. Right. And I've played against some Samoan guys, and oh. I will tell you what. Those dudes are some of the strongest, hardest hitting guys you will ever play football against. And Utah, nobody else goes to recruit mm -hmm. these kids. They'll have like, a, they did a, a 30 for 30 on one of those teams mm -hmm. on ESPN, and they'll be like some remote island with just a Samoan community, and they'll put out four or five D1 football players. Mm -hmm. And they're usually like defensive linemen, offensive, offensive linemen, linemen just yep. big brute yep. guys. Just big. And that's what Utah cool. feeds off of. And, and they do a pretty good job at it. So, and you took the words out of my mouth. As a matter of fact, we uh, Michigan opened with Utah last year, and they beat us. That's and right. we didn't lose again until we played the Buckeyes. So Utah was very, very underrated last nope. year. Well, did y'all play the Buckeyes first, or did y'all play Michigan State? Yeah, I think y'all lost that game. Oh, yeah, Michigan State. Y'all won the better part of the game. Yeah. <laughs> Just the end. Did <laughs> nah, wise guy. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So, but Utah is always a very underrated team. They're, they're not fast. Right. They're, they're never fast. They're never flashy. Nothing like flashy. Like you said, they're going to run the ball. Yep. They're going to run uh, some trick plays, and they're going to play functional defense. Mm -hmm. That That's actually a good term. So, I think everybody goes uh, – Stan Who'd you pick in, in that division or oh, in that conference? Stanford. Stanford. I, I think everybody pretty much Stanford. picked Stanford. Yeah. But I want to say this. Uh, don't count out Washington State. That's true. Yeah. Well, that's your you guy. That's, 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 that's your guy. That's right. You're yeah. right. That's, that's, that's my guy. That's, that's Mike Leeds. Guy. I just yeah. think that he's done amazing things. Yeah. I mean, come on, they won nine games last year. Yeah. 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 On, on, the, on the sneak. Right. And see, the thing about it is here, here we don't pay that much attention to out there. there. No, I do. Because I, I like Leach. I was going to say, yeah, because you, yeah, yeah, you got Mike Leach, yeah. Right. But, um, yeah, so I think everybody agrees Stanford, but watch out for the, uh, for the Wazoo. Yeah. So uh, we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back.